Welcome to another week of Unfiltered. I'm your host, Rick Blood. You know, the day that I taped this, uh, last Thursday, beautiful day. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was the, 20, the 25th of February, and it was uh, damn near 60 degrees on the, uh, the clock on the bank across the street from the studio. And uh, man, you can't ask for a better February than this. Uh, heavy rain last night, winds, uh, not so much around the Keene area where we are, but uh, Massachusetts, a lot of power outages, high winds, uh, all the way down the eastern seaboard. Uh, so that's the weather. Again, I'm afraid that, you know, come beginning of April, middle of April, middle of May, we'll get hammered with a snowstorm or some crazy weird stuff like that. Um, all right, today I'm gonna talk a little bit about education, but first, a couple other things in the news. President Obama used executive privilege once again. Uh, you know, I swear this guy has used more executive privilege than any president ever. And I don't know. This time he uses his, his executive powers to close Guantanamo Bay. That's where we hold the terrorists who have been arrested, captured, whatever. There, everybody says that we can't hold these people, they haven't been charged with anything, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is where it gets really tricky because criminal rights, the whole uh, innocent until proven guilty, the Availability of the United States judicial system and charges, the whole, the whole process of our legal system and protections that the Constitution affords. Here's what people don't realize. The Constitution is intended to protect American citizens. Proper search and seizure has nothing to do with somebody if they're not an American citizen. If you are not an American citizen, you are not protected by the Constitution of the United States. How hard is that to understand? That was written for us, the people. The Constitution wasn't written to protect what I consider as lawful combatants. That's the military term that's used for the people who are engaged in a war. Now, yes, in the old days, as we look back through history, wars were government against government whole countries against whole countries. And it was easy. Our military fought their military, right? Simple. That's the way wars are intended to be. The military people fight the wars. That's what they get paid to do. And here's where lately, Wars are not the same as they used to be. Now you've got small groups, or in, in ISIS's case, a huge group. But they're not a country. They're not a recognized government. 
It would be like if, if all the yahoos down in Georgia took up their arms and started attacking the government. There's no difference. Except that if those people did that and they were American citizens, yes, they get arrested, charged with crimes, put through the, the United States government's legal system. And yes, terrorists should be, you know, those terrorists that are suspected terrorists, I should say suspected terrorists, but again, it's a wartime. Uh, they have openly stated their hatred for America and their intent to destroy America, which makes them the enemy. Does anybody remember the movie Midnight Run? The kid that went to Turkey, bought a little bit of hash, a little bit of hash, taped it on his body and tried to leave Turkey with it. And he was arrested for possession of hashish. He was thrown in a Turkish prison with nothing. And he was kept there until they got ready to charge him and and he was afforded no protections. He asked to see his lawyer and they say, we don't do that in this country. You don't get to see your lawyer. Countries operate under their own rules. That's what makes war these days so incredibly frustrating and hard for people to understand because we're not just fighting another government superpower. We're fighting for you know, people like you and I. Apparently something set these ISIS people off over there where they live. to want to, you know, again, ISIS, I, I can't even say that because ISIS is a, it's a religious war. It's a stupid war. It's the same thing. But these people think that their religion should be the only religion in the world and they will kill anybody who is not of their religion. And that includes the Pope. The Pope is the number one target of ISIS. He is the leader of, of what ISIS is against. ISIS is against Catholicism and, and uh, Christianity. They want everybody that, are, that is involved with those religions to die. Or to become Muslim. It's tough, I know. I know, and whether, whether you choose to believe the government that, that, you know, terrorism is a real thing, or if you choose to not believe the government and, and you don't even believe that there's terrorism, you don't think there's evil in the world, you know, you people are delusional. If you think, you know, oh yes, we should close down Gitmo, we should close down, we should close, yes, we should close down all the prisons. Nobody should ever be imprisoned. That is a clear, a, 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 that's a clear invasion of your right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If somebody locks you up for something you do, they're, they're, they've taken your constitutional rights away. Life, liberty, that's it, liberty means not being locked up. And there are people out there that say, yes, even murderers shouldn't be locked up. Personally, I think, you know, murderers 
should be killed immediately. You know, one trial, 12 jurors, all peers, they say you're guilty, next day you're gone, dead. People, there is true evil in this world. And there are people who will be violent just for the sake of being violent and hurting and maiming other people. Those are the people that we need to weed out. And granted, anybody is capable of horrendous acts, depending on how far they're pushed. If you push somebody far enough, they will kill you. Plain and simple. It's a survival thing. Self-preservation. You see it all the time in schools. Bullies, they pick on a kid, they pick on a kid, they pick on a kid, they pick on a kid. When the kid snaps, everybody goes, oh my God, this kid snapped. He must be mental or whatever. And it's the kid's fault. Get over it. People can be driven to do horrendous things. Just saying. All right. Have I ranted enough yet? It just drives me nuts, you know? Yes, it would be nice to go back to nice, clean cut, uh, our government against your government, your army against our army, uh, you know, and, and when they've, the, the two privates of the army, not the guys that make the decisions by any means, but the two lowliest grunts in the army, one on our side, one on their side, they're standing face to face with their guns pointed at each other. They know what their jobs are. It's their job to kill us, it's our job to kill them. It's an honor thing with soldiers. Good soldiers, good career military people, they know the secret. They know that a strong military, the most powerful military in the world is necessary. Setting that army into action is something that no general ever wants to do. Sending your, your military into a war is a last resort. Should be a last resort. All right. Let's get on to some... some cooler stuff because um, I was going to talk about the iPhone thing but I'm not going to bother because here's your choice people do you want safety security um, at the risk of every single shred of your privacy being gone make the choice that's it you can't have both. All right. And just on that line, I have to tell you, now that I know that, that uh, the government can't just get into cell phones, like what I've been led to believe on NCIS and, uh, and you know, all these other, other cop and, and law shows where, you know, they're, they're zooming into pictures and pulling out license plates numbers and and they're cracking cell phone data and they're cracking into computer stuff apparently the government can't do that so and i thought maybe they could it takes a little bit of worry off my shoulders um anyway uh the, the, uh, odd news yahoo odd news has a great thing um It's uh, audio released in tussle between turkeys and letter, letter carriers. Apparently in Hillsdale, New Jersey was where this all went down. God, this computer's running slow today. Uh, a postman seems dumbfounded in a 911 call he made to get help for a New Jersey letter carrier. 
a postmaster seems dumbfounded in a 911 call he made to get help. For a New Jersey letter carrier who was trapped inside his truck by several wild turkeys. There was actually audio released, so you may want to look that up. Uh, the postmaster initially tells police, you're not going to believe this, before providing details about the exact, noting similar events have happened before. I've seen the TV commercial about that just a little while ago, the, the milkman that was attacked by, uh, by Turkey. I think it was a milkman. Um, it was an ad for something stupid. Um, the police officer who took the call sounds equally amazed. <laughs> Authorities say about seven turkeys accosted the letter carrier, but he wasn't injured. Two officers scared off the turkeys so the letter carrier could continue his route. Wild turkeys near ex extinction a few decades ago, but have made a comeback in New Jersey in the recent years. And up here, I might say. Um, you can see wild turkeys everywhere. When I was a kid, I don't think I ever saw a wild turkey when I was a little kid. Now you, they're all over. Um, you drive up through, I drive up through Stoddard and uh, I see them on the side of 123. Um, if you go down uh, to Parker State uh, Wildlife Refuge, Parker River National Wildlife, Feder uh, Wildlife Refuge down in Plum Island in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Tons of them down there. They, they walk right down the side of the road. You drive by them, they don't even move out of the road for you. Um, police scratching heads over bald man who's stealing Rogaine. That's nice. Oh, All right, I was going to talk about education. Because the cost of education is so outrageously high. Um, and I know this will never happen because, face it, teachers need to work too. Um, and if a teacher videotaped their class, you wouldn't need the teacher anymore, pretty much. What got me interested in this this week is because uh, you're seeing this on Tuesday. So last week, uh, a website called Creative Live was doing uh, a week-long Thing called Photoshop Week 2016. Every day, starting at noon, because the people that are doing this are on the West Coast, so it was a, a nine o'clock Pacific time start. They've been holding live online classes in all different areas of Photoshop. One of them I watched was a from shoot to finish, uh, from shoot through workflow and finish uh, of making a composite in Photoshop. Showed how you shoot the stuff, how you get it into Photoshop, how you prepare, how you prepare for Photoshop, how you put it into Photoshop, how you blend the two images together and make it a, a very nice looking composite photo. Uh, one last night was uh, from shoot through finish of uh, wedding portraiture. A lot of great tips. This was a, a three hour online class, live class that allowed the viewers, there was a little box under the screen for the viewers to ask questions and they were answered. I actually watched uh, one uh, Wednesday afternoon because I, I had some time between my duties at Cheshire TV and when I had to go and, and start filming the uh, MSFI committee meeting. Uh, so I was at home and I was watching, uh, it was a hour and a half class on color toning in Photoshop and, and Lightroom. Teaching you how to color tone and, and color grade your, your photos. And uh, the, the lady had the, uh, the gradient panel open. She was adding a gradient to her picture. And uh, in the gradient pop-up box, there are two little check boxes down near the bottom. One says reverse. And I don't know if you know what, a, I'm sure you know what a gradient is, but a gradient is, let's say, blue on, on one end and it fades to orange on the other end. 
Okay, I, I picked that because that the entire spectrum is in between there because blue and orange are opposite colors. Um, so there's a reverse, which would take, you know, the orange side and now put it on, on this side and the blue side and put it on this side now to flip, flip it that way. There's another button down there called Dither. Well, I have seen this button since I started using Facebook and never really using it and trying to click on it and experiment with it. I could never see what it did. So, yesterday during the class, I saw that come up on the screen. I typed in, what is the dither button and what does it do? Well, the lady that was given the course, she didn't know. She, t she actually answered during the class. You know, they said, hey, we have a question from Rick, who's one of the, the video watchers on, you know, one of the internet watchers. And here's the question. And she says, mm, you know, I don't really know. She told me to Google it. She says, Rick, you're going to have to Google it because I don't know. And she said, but it brings up a good point, which at least I was happy to, to you know, be somewhat helpful in, in their little live class. Uh, she said that the thing about Photoshop is you don't need to know what every little thing in Photoshop does. Because, you know, Photoshop will do millions of things. And maybe you're only going to use, you know, two or three thousand. You know? So, anyway, it's, it's a really cool, and, and that got me to thinking, you know, the whole education thing. And the brick and mortar, and you know, you don't have to put 700 kids in a, in a high school when all they really need is the access to these sites. Or maybe even better, maybe um, a live stream where the students don't go to the high school, don't go to the schools, only the teachers go to the schools. And then the teachers give the, you know, film their classes and it, and it goes out to the kids who are at home on their computer, able to ask live questions, able to do stuff like that. Probably the initial investment in, in the technology to do that would be high. But you wouldn't have, you know, kids could eat at home. They, you know, you cut out so much of a budget when the kids don't actually have to go to the schools. You know, and there are um, Creative Live isn't the only, Creative Live is probably is one of the ones, um, you know, but you can go on YouTube and you, up in your search bar on YouTube, type in DIY. Don't, you don't have to type any, you don't have to type anything after that. Type DIY and hit search and just look at the number of things that you can, you can learn to, to do. Let me do it right here. Let me do it right now. Uh, YouTube. Open up. Uh, another great guy I like is Woody Walters. He's another photographer that, that specializes in, in uh, composite -y type type stuff. And he does some fantastic work. And again, Tutorials online. So I'm a punch in DIY, hit search. What do we have? Uh, make your EOS into a pencil sharpener, hot cupcakes, lipstick out of bubble gum, uh, color changing slime. Uh, 20 period life hacks, uh, do it yourself sparkly highlighter rainbow nails, uh, do it yourself aqua magic sand, remember? Uh, room decor, build a life size phone controlled BB-8 droid, build the, the back to the future hoverboard, uh, DIY liquid glass, DIY mint Milano cookies. Uh, it just goes uh, on and on and on with, I mean, you can, 
you can do almost anything. DIY copper tripod lamp. How to make soda, Sprite soda gummy bottle shape. Jello dessert. You know, cooking, that's a DIY thing. Uh, 3D printing beginner's guide. Uh, you know, DIY, how to make an Oreo phone case. How to make a case that looks like an Oreo cookie. Um, you know, mirrored nightstands. Uh, football treats. Well, of course, that's food. Uh, you know, billions. Billions upon billions of, of educational opportunities. All you have to do is, is click and watch. And by all means, if it's not live and you have a question, guess what? You can go online. There are forums. Somewhere out there is somebody who's figured out the question that you have and you type it in a forum and guess what? Somebody will answer. That's how I got the answer to the dither question. And just so you folks know, dither is uh, a process that helps reduce gradient banding. So, more uh, interesting facts here for the last minute of the show. Uh, months that begin on a Sunday will always have a Friday the 13th. So if the month starts on a Sunday, it'll, always, it'll have a Friday the 13th. And every month that has a Friday the 13th starts on Sundays. Uh, do you know that horror writer Stephen King sleeps with a light on because he's afraid of the dark? Uh, 38% of American men say they love their cars more than, more than women. And from watching a TV show called Bar Rescue, I heard that 43% of men prefer bacon over sex. All right. U.S. military operates 234 golf courses, uh, bulletproof vests, fire escapes, windshield wipers, and laser printers were all invented by women. And my time's up. So, until next week, this is Unfiltered. I'm Rick Blood. Peace.